After the introduction to the basic principles of HTML in our e-lecture HTML Fundamentals, we will now focus on the main tags, attributes and principles that are used for text formatting. In fact, HTML provides a rich inventory of elements that can be used to organize and format the text within the body of a web document. And these possibilities, this inventory can be grouped as follows and in this sequence we will go through this e-lecture. First of all we will look at the possibility of inserting headings into our document. Then we will see how text can be organized into paragraphs and even into larger chunks referred to as divisions. Furthermore, HTML provides a way to add special characters to documents. These are referred to as HTML entities and will also be discussed in this e-lecture. To illustrate all these options we will use the simple HTML source code of our e-lecture HTML fundamentals and will modify it in the following. But let us now start with the formatting of text and let's first of all look at headings. To define a heading in an HTML document, the content of the heading has to be inserted between the heading tag. Now the heading tag consists of the letter H for heading and a number ranging from 1 to 6. Now this number is the heading level and it defines the size with which a heading is displayed in the browser. Well, the range is from 1 large to 6 small. By adding the align attribute to the opening tag, it is possible to change the text alignment of the heading. The value can be set to left, which is a default, right, center or justify. Here are some examples applied to our document. Now, in our first example, we're using the default. The heading Welcome is contained within simple H1 tags, so nothing happens. The default is left alignment. Now, in our second example, we have aligned the heading to the right by using the attribute align equals right in the h1 tag. Here are further possibilities align center and align justify. To insert paragraphs into web documents it does not suffice to insert uh, simple line breaks in the source code. For example here we have a line break after all but if we check the result in the browser, we see nothing will happen. There's no line break between all and of. Well, the paragraph tag, and that's the main tag for creating line breaks, is the most well-known one here. It signals the beginning of a paragraph in an HTML document. Paragraphs with no additional attributes are displayed in the browser's default font with extra space above and below them. By adding the align attribute to the opening p tag, it is possible to change the text alignment of the paragraph. The value can be set again from left, that is the default, right, center and justify. Here are some examples again applied to our document. Now in this case we have aligned the text to the right. Align equals right is the example. Other pos possibilities are align equals center or align equals justify. Now while multiple empty paragraph tags always add extra vertical space, the standalone line break tag does not. Here it is. It breaks a line of text 
at the position where it is inserted, but it does not add space above and below. It is also possible to prevent line breaks by using the no break tag. Now, this can be applied if text and graphics will not be broken by the automatic text wrapping function of the browser. Now the next step we want to apply is we want to apply style attributes such as alignment across a whole chunk of a page. For this purpose HTML offers general block elements and the most well-known one is the division tag. It divides an HTML document into separate distinct sections known as divisions. Used by itself the div tag does not affect the appearance of the text in a browser. However, with its attributes, and you see normally the division tag has several attributes, now with these attributes one can influence, for example, the alignment of the entire division in several ways. Let us look at two examples again. Now in our first example, we define the heading and the paragraph as one division and applied the align attribute center with the value center to both. And the result, as you can see here, is that the heading and the text within the p tags are both centered in our web document. In the second example, we have added a second attribute. Now, in addition to the align attribute, we have added the style attribute with which we can define, for example, the font type. And as you can see here, now we have defined the font family Verdana and the result is clearly visible. Now, the text is not only centered, but it also is displayed in the Verdana font. Let's finally look at special entities. Now HTML provides a method of entering characters that cannot be expressed in the document's character encoding or that cannot easily be entered on a keyboard. These character entity references or entities for short are case sensitive and take the form and symbol then the name and then a semicolon and there are no spaces between them. Here are two examples. The first displays the copyright symbol. The entity name is copy and the second displays the registered trademark symbol. The entity name is reg. Well let's apply this to our example. Now here you can see we added the reg, the registered trademark entity, and the browser nicely displays that the VLC is a registered trademark. Beyond these name-based entities, one can use numeric references and other alternatives. So the first one are numeric references in the decimal format, and the second is the so-called hexadecimal code with which entities can also be displayed. In both cases we have alternative representations for the copyright symbol once more. Now there are many websites where you can find the character entity references in the decimal and hexadecimal format so I do not have to present a table in this e-lecture. Now let's stop here and let's postpone further options of text formatting to another e-lecture where we will discuss, for example, uh, further text-related topics such as pre-formatted text, block quotes or styles. So I'm looking forward to meeting you again in my second e-lecture on text in HTML.